Good morning. It's Tuesday, the 2nd of June. Pastor Ron Jetter, Emanuel Lutheran Church, Grandview, Washington, trying to do this while there's just a few cars going by. There's the sign. This is where we are. And here is our garden. It's hard for me to see because the sun is right in my eyes. So I'm hoping that that's showing our garden out front. Lavender is doing beautifully. The plants are starting to grow with watering but as you can see there's also plenty of weeds all those little bits and pieces of green now i'm back inside a little easier for me to see at least back inside the sanctuary today we took down the red banners for sunday because pentecost is now over this coming sunday will be trinity which is white so I will use the background on my Zoom on Sunday that I already did for the season of Easter. But the Sunday after that, well, we uh, will have the season of green, the season of the church, the season of Pentecost. So men's group were here today doing weeding and cleaning up the outside, hanging the banners and changing to the season, the long 26 week season of Pentecost. So now we've got all of our greens. Very familiar scene. Very familiar place where for many, many years people have been here. Yesterday I showed you my garden at home. Today the church gardens. And today's verse, Matthew 13, 24 to 30. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Kind of a, a strange parable, an interesting way of putting it, isn't it? That somehow an enemy put the tares and tares I would guess is pretty much what we would call weeds gardens grow weeds my garden looked beautiful yesterday in the picture but I guarantee today I will be out there either pulling weeds or using some kind of uh, a chemical weed retardant on parts of them being careful not to harm the plants that I want to be there that's the parable, that you don't go and start pulling out the good with the bad. Or as some have said, you don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. These expressions that we have, and they all mean the same thing, be careful about trying to destroy the bad because the good may go away with it. So. How do we do that as gardeners? And what does it really mean for everyday life? Well, it's a balance. And boy, we, we understand balancing act. Our nation is trying to do a balancing act this week after the, the death of an African-American man by a, uh, a white Minnesota police officer. How do we allow for peaceful protests? protests while at the same time identifying those who are clearly out to destroy, to loot, uh, to cause anarchy and chaos. They're not there as part of the movement. They're not there to improve society. They're there for their own dark reasons. How do we allow the wheat to grow but try to inhibit the tares? Or do we allow all of it to go on? Or do we shut it all down? Do we destroy, destroy the garden altogether? COVID-19, which is no doubt at the root of a lot of the frustration of so many people right now. How do we slow the spread of disease while at the same time not kill the economy of our country, 
not kill the jobs that people need to put food on their table. There was uh, an interesting commercial on television. I've been watching sci Science Channel lately and watching how asteroids are going to come or volcanoes are going to blow up, and it gives me a whole different perspective on things. I, I, I need that. Uh, too much news, so more science, less news. That's my motto this week. And the commercial, I think it was for, for John Deere, it said, during COVID-19, the land didn't care. The land, the sun, the water, the soil, it's all there and it will grow. And we can either step back and let it grow weeds, which it will do quite on its own, kochia, dandelions, thistle, tumbleweeds, and so many other things just on their own. We don't have to plant them, they're just there. But if we want crops, we have to intentionally work that land, uh, enhance that soil in, in some cases, plant those seeds, water, nurture them, and my garden's laid out in nice rows. I could have just thrown seeds and said, okay, grow. Well, that's not the way gardens are. You want things, they grow at different rates. You want them to be able to have their space. So I have my broccoli, my two kinds of lettuce, my beets, my uh, cucumbers, my cantaloupes, my, my beans and my peas, uh, all of that, and the potatoes, two separate groups of potatoes in two separate areas, and weeds. Every kind of weed grows with whatever. They don't seem to care. There are some little ones, the teeny little mouse ears, and they just spread out from a central point. And of course, there are the dandelions because they blow in from everywhere. They're not as bad, but uh, I have volunteer cherry tomatoes, which to me are like weeds because there are hundreds and hundreds of them. And if I don't pull them when they get about this high, they will take over. They'll shade everything, they'll use all the water, all the nutrients, and I don't want that. But I have to, to stop them without harming the stuff that's growing. That's the balance that we're doing as a society. How do we stop the virus or slow the virus without killing the economy, without killing jobs? Well, for us, we, we are shopping uh, at local stores, going to local restaurants to do takeout, a couple times a week. Uh, we are trying to do as little online shopping because frankly, I'm one of those who doesn't want Amazon.com to take over the world or Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Apple to take over the world. Um, they've already got plenty, but what about the local people? The Red Apple store just down the street here on Euclid. Love that store, great little store. Hadn't done a lot of shopping there, but Pastor Gary suggested I try it. It's now where I do most of my grocery shopping. So finding that balance, um, wearing a mask when I go out. I've got a couple of them. This is, this is my Paisley mask. I call it my hippie mask. That and, and hand sanitizer and gloves as necessary to be smart, but not, not to just stay home. Uh, there are those who do need to, though. And we recognize when we do gather back in this worship space, there are those who can't. And we've got to figure out uh, what equipment do we need. We know that we will do both live and online. That's not the question. The question now is, what equipment do we need? We don't know when, but by the time we answer the question when, those other questions about how need to be answered. So that's where we're at, looking at how. How are we going to plant seeds for the next phase of what our congregation looks like? Um, and trying to do it with, with some limitations is like trying to grow knowing that there will be weeds coming along. It's interesting, Jesus says, an enemy planted those. Wow, if I'd known that, I would have stayed awake a couple of nights and saw who it was and came and put those weeds in my garden. Well, the enemy is the air, the seeds blow in, or in some cases with the volunteer cherry tomatoes, the enemy is the seed that's already in the soil. And there are so many seeds that are already in the soil. They germinate, and I suppose we could let them germinate and grow and then kill everything off and then plant, but then our crops would be behind by about eight weeks. So that's not really a very good idea either. 
there are no perfect solutions in life. And I think that's part of what that parable means, that the, the solution is do what you have to do to make sure that you find the best workable solution. And for Jesus, the owner of that, of that uh, wheat field said, no, let's just wait until harvest. It's going to be more work at harvest. But that way, the goal is to get a crop. The goal is for us to be healthy as a society, and that means jobs and uh, not being sick with COVID, not overwhelming our healthcare system. A little bit of everything. It's a balancing act. Life is a balancing act. How will we get through the, 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 the racial tension that's happening right now? And again, by listening to those who have the story of grief, uh, and in some ways here in Grandview, we are so insulated from this, but there are those who have grief and we need to help them if it, if it falls to us to protect their lives and their livelihoods and tell a righteous story uh, while doing our best to take roundup to the ones who would want to be weeds. And I don't even want to explore what that means, but it means that somehow um, limiting damage that... Uh, that the weed sowers are doing among us. That's my thoughts for the day. Tomorrow, Bible study, live 4 p.m. See you then.